the major problems that we face in this area, sir. Uh, Dr. Nick, Honourable Dr. Nick Smith. Mr. Speaker, I want to make just a brief uh, contribution on this bill and want to begin with the substance. The core issue that Parliament is wanting to address with its climate change legislation is the issue of greenhouse gas emissions. And I was fascinated to read the just tabled report <coughs> from the Ministry for the Environment on the level of emissions. And I really would ask members opposite to pick up that report and have a look on page 17. Because what it shows, Mr Chairman, is this. In the years 2000 to 2008, in every single year, the level of greenhouse gas emissions increased quite dramatically. In fact, over the period, it shows it went from 64 million tonnes up to a level of 78 million tonnes in the eight years that Labor was in government supported by the Greens. Now, when the scheme in the period of which we have been the government, it's interesting to note that in each year emissions have gone down. Now, I was expecting to hear speeches from members opposite commending the government on its record in that regard. Mr Speaker, I thought that's the core of what this debate was all about. Uh, and so I would firstly challenge members to look at that annual report and acknowledge that under this government the emissions trend for New Zealand has changed and that New Zealand is set to comfortably meet its Kyoto commitments. And before members opposite bag New Zealand's international reputation in this area, I want them to line up and tell me which are the countries that are doing a whole lot better than New Zealand because I say to the Minister and the Chair, New Zealand can stand tall. We are doing our fair share as we promised. The second issue I want to address is the question of agriculture. Now, I've listened, Mr Chairman, to speaker after speaker concerned about New Zealand's balance of payments and wanting us to grow this country's exports. Is there a member in this House that does not understand that the backbone of New Zealand's exporting industries are our primary industries. And yet, here we have members opposite wanting to kneecap our most important exporting industry. And I want to ask members opposite, how will that help New Zealand's balance of payments? And I particularly want to challenge members opposite on an article in the Guardian newspaper last week. You know what it said? British consumers help climate change by eating New Zealand land. That's what the British newspaper said. And do you know why they said that? Because scientific studies had shown that when they consume New Zealand lamb, the impact in terms of emissions is about half that of consuming British lamb. Now, the question I've got for members opposite, who have consistently run the argument that for environmental reasons agriculture emissions should be put into the emissions trading scheme on the 1st of January next year. My question is this. If you are the British consumer and that takes place, you're actually providing a financial incentive for them to consume lamb that's produced somewhere else other than New Zealand. And that will actually drive emissions up. So I'm all for environmental responsibility. But I want to see measures being adopted in New Zealand that will help and not hinder the growth of emissions. And I say that the position the Minister has taken, that New Zealand should not put agricultural emissions into the ETS until we see greater progress internationally, and secondly, when we see the product of the huge investment that this government has made in research programmes that will develop the practical technology by which farmers can address those emissions is absolutely the right policy, both economically and environmentally, for New Zealand. The third point I want to make is the complete contradiction of members opposite in terms of their campaign around manufacturing jobs. You see, members opposite cannot cry foul about the potential job issues for key industries like New Zealand Steel, 
like wholesome cement, like the aluminium smelter down in Invercargill, they cannot sing that tune in one breath and then in the next say that they want to impose greater costs. Mr Chairman, they want to impose greater costs on those same manufacturers. So I challenge the next member from the Labour Party, a member who has been championing the cause of jobs in the manufacturing sector, to explain how putting more costs on the manufacturing sector is going to help jobs at this very difficult time economically. Because Labour can't have it both ways. The final point I want to make, Mr Speaker, is in respect to electricity prices. You see, I constantly hear members opposite saying they are concerned about households and their power bills. I simply challenge them to be honest and upfront, because the amendments they table in their name all will lift the price of power bills for average Kiwi households. Now, I'm one of those that does want to see incentives for renewable power, but there has to be a balance. There has to be a balance towards the shift we need to make in New Zealand before more renewable energy, and no government in the last 20 years has as good a track record as what we've seen take place in the numbers that are published by the Ministry for Business and Innovation. It's proper that we do that. The important reforms that my colleague Amy Adams is working on the RMA is going to help us build more renewable energy, but we need to balance that with the real costs that electricity imposes on both households and businesses. Because, Mr Chairman, the part that I get frustrated with is this. Members opposite keep talking about the ETS costs as though they only fall on corporates. They don't. Every cost that we impose in this bill are not being imposed on some corporate but ordinary New Zealand households, farmers and businesses. And I challenge members opposite to bring that reality to this debate. The last and the very last point I want to make is I've heard all sorts of rhetoric from members that say that this bill takes the emissions trading scheme backwards. That's untrue. That's untrue. And I just want to say to the member that's interjected, actually, under this bill, the New Zealand emissions trading scheme will take up a new sector of gases on the 1st of January. Not only is it going to include industry, electricity, transport fuels, not subject to the Australian scheme, it is going to include on the 1st of January next year, it is going to include those very powerful greenhouse gases that actually expands the scheme next year to more than what it was this year. Sure, members opposite can claim that the scheme may not be going as far, fast forward as they were like. That is a fair argument, but it is not. Well, the member says it's in reverse. The one for two operates now. In terms of the sectors that include, they're all there now. The truth is the emissions trading scheme under this bill next year will include more gases and will be more extensive than it is now, and it's important that we debate what's in the bill and not what's in the fantasies of members opposite. Dr Kennedy Graham.